Now let's say your DevOps or your system administrator team has come to you and said there's a critical problem with the application. We need to put it into maintenance mode for four hours at this particular window of time. I have here a Django application. This is just a dummy application that we're going to use to demonstrate this. We have two URLs within that application and those are linked to two views that we have in the views.py file. These two views, the index view and the about view, they just render templates to the page and the templates can be found here within the template directory. And if we look at the index.html template, it just contains a header tag along with some lorem ipsum. And this is the same for the about page as well. The header says about us and it contains that lorem ipsum. Now I have the Django server running. Let's go to the browser and this is the home page here. You can see the header one tag and then the lorem ipsum text and if we go to the slash about page you can see the about page as well. Now this is going to be a very quick video. What we're going to do is we're going to use a library called Django maintenance mode and that's going to allow us to put up a maintenance page when our application has to be taken offline. Django maintenance mode shows a 503 error page when maintenance mode is turned on and this works at an application level so it actually is Django itself that's going to return the page that's going to tell your users that the application is in maintenance mode so let's go through the installation instructions I'm going to copy the pip install command and we'll go back to VS code I'm going to stop the server and we can run that in a virtual environment to install Django maintenance mode the next thing we need to do is add maintenance mode to settings.installed apps so I'm in the settings.py file let's scroll down to the installed apps list and we're going to add maintenance mode to that list and we can save the file. Once we've done that, we need to add a middleware. So I'm going to copy the name of this middleware and this is the maintenance mode middleware. Let's go back to settings.py and add that at the bottom of the middleware list within a string here. And then we can save settings.py. And if we go back to the documentation, you can see the other steps here are to add a custom template here, a 503.html template, and then we can restart the Django server. So what I'm going to do is go back to the terminal here and I'm going to run the Django server and we're going to go back to our page here. If we refresh this page, you can see we still get the About Us page and that's because even though we've installed the library, we have not turned maintenance mode on. So how do we turn maintenance mode on? Let's go back to the documentation and by default, maintenance mode is set to none. This is a setting that you can add to your Django settings configuration. We can add a setting called maintenance mode and if this is set to true, then it's going to activate maintenance mode. So let's go back to settings.py. We'll scroll to the bottom here and we're going to add maintenance mode and we're going to set it equal to true. So this indicates that we are now in maintenance mode. What's going to happen if we go back to the application? When we refresh the page, we are now getting a template does not exist error. That's the 503.html template. That's the default template that Django will look for or will try to render when you have a 503 error. And the 503 HTTP status code is a status code that means the server is unavailable. So what we're going to do now is add this template. If we go back to the core application and we have a templates directory here, I'm going to create a new file called 503.html here. And if we go to the about page, I'm going to copy the content of the about page into this template. So we are going to extend a base template and then define a block called content. And let's remove the lorem ipsum text here. And I'm going to change the text within the header tag. And let's add the message website unavailable. Please try again later. Let's now save this file and we can go back to the browser. When we refresh this page, we now see the maintenance page, the 503.html page. Now, of course, in a real application, you would want to show a better maintenance page than this to your users. Otherwise, that's not going to look particularly professional for your website. If we go back to the documentation for this library, I'm going to highlight a couple of other settings that we can use here that are quite interesting. For example, there is a setting here, maintenance mode, ignore admin site. And if we set that to true, what that means is that the admin site will not be affected by the maintenance mode page. By default, if we go back to our site and we try and access the Django admin UI, we are still getting that maintenance page. But if we add this setting and we set it to true within the Django settings.py file, we are then going to be able to access the admin site, even though the rest of the website is unavailable. So that setting is quite interesting. We also have other settings, for example, to ignore authenticated users. And if that's 
that's true, then users that are logged into your application are not going to see the maintenance page. But anonymous users or users that are not logged in, they are going to see the maintenance page. So that's useful if you need to show the pages to your users who are maybe signed up, but hide it from everyone else. And there are similar settings for super users and staff in a Django application. One other interesting setting that we're going to look at here is this one, the template. Now by default, of course, that's set to the 503.html template, but we can change this if we go back to settings.py. I'm going to set this equal to errors slash 503.html. And then if we go to the templates directory, we can get a new folder here called errors and we can move the 503 into that. And that's maybe useful if you want to keep all your error pages within a particular directory in the Django application. And make sure if you're doing this to spell errors correctly here, and that should match the directory name on the left-hand side. If we go back to the browser, when we refresh this page, we are still getting the maintenance page that we created, but now we have used this maintenance mode template setting to specify our own template rather than the default 503.html. And one final thing in this video, if we go back to views.py, let's imagine that we have a particular page, for example, the about page, that we just want to show regardless of whether or not maintenance mode is on or off. And this makes sense because your about page on a website just contains static information usually about the company or the organization. And it typically doesn't really need to load a lot of dynamic data from databases or other external services that might cause your application to actually go into maintenance mode. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the documentation for Django maintenance mode. And under this views section, I'm gonna bring these imports into the application and paste these at the top of the views.py file. So we have two decorators that we can use here, force maintenance mode off and also force maintenance mode on. So if we want to allow users to access the about page, even when we have maintenance mode on, I'm going to copy this decorator here and we can specify that above the view function. So the decorator is force maintenance mode off and that means that for the about view, regardless of whether or not maintenance mode is on, it is going to allow users to access that page by forcing that particular setting off on that page. So let's go back to the browser and we're gonna to go to the about page. You can see when we refresh this page, we can now access it, but for our home page, we cannot access it because maintenance mode is on. So on the about page, this decorator has allowed us to override the setting that's coming from settings.py and it's allowing us to view that page. So that's all for this video. I'll leave a link to the documentation below the video. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video or learned anything new and we will see you in the next video.